All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's teacher chat. Um, so I will be hosting tonight. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm one of the co-founders of Insert Learning, but I'm also a high school science teacher. I'm the STEM coordinator at a charter school. Uh, I was like my 11th year teaching science. So um, I thought it'd be fun to throw in a science. Um, so if you're watching the replay, you can actually still follow along um, by joining the class. I'm going to put the code up for you guys in a few seconds here. And um, what's going to be cool is that then we'll be able to kind of see everybody's responses kind of show up on some of my examples. Um, like as we're going along. So um, let's see here. Because that's going to be happening tonight. Um, um, and everybody should be able to see it now. Um, in the feed on the right hand side, um, I will do my best to try and make sure that I'm checking back at that um, off and on as we're going as we're going along with the webinar. Um, but to get started, I'm going to have you guys join my class. So what I'll do is I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to head over to. Oh, like right. So here's where we're gonna be going over tonight. Oh, my little a little emojis didn't show up in the presenter mode. Um, but right, so what we're gonna be going over is finding high contact science labs, close reading strategies for this source and have to do their own research. And that is all fitting in with strategies for the science classroom. All right. Um, and somebody let me know if they are able to hear it right now. Libby, if you can hear me, let me know in the chat section there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class for tonight's webinar. And we recently added in the ability for teachers to join classes. So um, what you do is you head over to your teacher dashboard and you click on classes. And for you, when you click plus, you're going to enroll in my class, but I'm going to Of like um, as a student. So what I'm going to do is for this one, I'm going to call it 4, 4, 17 science strategies. All right, and I'm going to create it. So you don't need a Google Classroom, that's fine. And what you guys want is this code right here. So you want to enter in this code, and I'll put it in the chat, J-G-K-I, all lowercase. Um, I'm going to paste it in here. All right, perfect. Class code. All right, so there is our class code. So what you guys need to do to follow along, um, this is optional, but it's always much more fun, um, is you head over to your Insert Learning Dashboard, click on Classes, and then you want to enroll or join our class, and that code is JGKI, and I'll be assigning all of our lessons tonight to that one. So, all right, going back here, strategies for the science classroom. All right, this first one we're going to be talking about is finding high interest and quality content um right because one of the things is that now that we're working on the internet um you've got unlimited possibilities but it's really tough like how do you find the really good stuff that your students are that's gonna be i've got a collection here um there's much more than what's out there right than what's on here right now right because just by any website will work but some of the ones that we're going to be talking about tonight is tween tribune is an amazing one and science news for students or sciencenews.org and sciencenewsforstudents.org. Really great science articles. PLOS is one that we're going to be talking about as primary source, but also like Scientific American and AAAS Science Make are both really high quality sources um, with some pretty, very timely um, content. They've got a lot of stuff they're constantly publishing. Science Daily, Daily Science articles, they're much typically shorter and not as in depth as some of these other ones. But right, I mean, sometimes you're not looking for like something that's gonna be like a three-day reading. Um, OpenStax is open source um, textbooks. Now these are geared at the college level, but they are creating some AP level courses. Um, but of course, because you can use Insert Learning for scaffolding, um, you can make some of these things more accessible. National Geographic works, and then Quanta. I actually just found today when I was looking for different sources. Um, check that one out on your own. Big Think is another really good one. It's not always about science, but it's a good thing to kind of get people thinking. And then IFL Science, I'm also going to be using. And I'm going to show off first, right? So IFL Science is short, targeted things. Now, I found out about this on Facebook. And what I like about that 
is because we're kind of talking about like the Facebook, like, right. Like that's where we can, like people find a lot of stuff. Um, it stands for I effing love science. Um, but it's not really effing. Uh, well, I mean, you figure it out, uh, right? Some of my students kind of figure that out. Not all of them really get it. Um, but what it is is that it's very short, um, high interest articles that are basically aimed at like young adults. Um, and so kind of going through here, they've got lots of different articles, um, lots of different topics. But you can kind of see of like, right, like this was like a fairly short one. Uh, so even if I went to the full article here. Um, these are really good sources for finding things that are just going to be cool and be at a really for heights. Um, these are from younger younger grades too, um, but it's a really great one. So what we're going to do is for this one, going through here, um, I'm not going to use this one, but I do want to just kind of show this one off. All right, so we got that one. I'm going to jump over to Science News for Students. So sciencenews.org and Science News for Students. Um, and Let's see, we're gonna go down and we'll use the mathematics one. Let's, oh, that's a podcast one maybe. Um, this is kind of an interesting one, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with um, sharks. Going to be, um, one of the things about science news, so science news that are organ science news for students, um, and they create original articles that are, um, um, aimed at the classroom, uh, middle school and high school. And some of the articles, if you go down towards the bottom, they have what makes them a little different. They've got power words in there. And sometimes they will have a worksheet that goes along with it. And you can easily just copy and paste those questions and into your insert learning lesson. But I'm going to load in insert learning. And I'm going to start off with um, a question for this one. What do you know about this topic? All right now, what's great about this one is this is a very general one. I'm going to assign this now to our class. So 417 Science Strategies. Uh, all right, so we've done that. I'm going to reload the lesson. You do have to reload the lesson the first time after you've created it for it then to kind of like sync up with like live. So you do start learning dashboard. You've enrolled in the class. And now when you go to your lessons page, you're going to see then our, our lessons show up in there, and it is called electricity. Um, we don't want that. Electricity sensor harnesses shark's secret weapon. Like electricity sensor, right? It's, it's a tongue twister there for me. Um, and I'm going to jump over and see if anybody's got some questions right now that they've posted here. Um, right? You really can't, Libby. <laughs> like everyone wants to read about sharks. They're just so cool. So um, once you get to the lesson, go ahead and start typing. responses and I see that Libby is in my class um, so Libby as you start typing responses that's gonna show up there and I can enter in a score um, but really the idea here is pulling in different content sources now the way that I have used insert learning um, for kind of grabbing my students attention um, is I did one lesson with my students um, about uh, so I live in Minnesota um, and I have, and a lot of my students have a high Somali population, a large Somali population in my school. Um, and so there was a, um, a measles outbreak that was really impacting the Somali population. Um, and it was a really good, like, thing about, like, right, like, kind of talking about, like, vaccinations and, like, the vaccination rates then for the Somali population, like, skyrocketed past the general population in Minnesota um, after the outbreak, after the kind of, like, this big education campaign. But it was perfect, it was super relevant. And I brought that into my, game development class. It wasn't even regular science, but just game development. So you can go out there and find lots of different sources. So we got this. All right, so we've been talking a lot about finding different sources, but now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna jump to close reading strategies for teachers because going back to this article, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a sticky note and I will admit as a teacher, I do not, as a science teacher, um, I am not good at having my students closely read. So. And close reading basically of like the idea of like having them read, highlight the text and respond to it as they're reading it. And so what we've done is we've added in this help and support. Um, we've got these quick lesson ideas. So I'm gonna click on this, our templates, and I'm gonna go down to this annotation. And what you can do is you can copy and paste this. So the one that we've got is highlight in green the main idea yellow for supporting details and blue are words that are vocabulary words that you're that are new to you so what you can do is you can just copy this 
head back over here and just paste in those instructions. And it's that simple. And if your students are going to struggle with that, you know, first one, maybe go through it together, together with them. But you can also take this video, and I'm going to just simply copy the link to this video. And I'm going to paste in that URL. And now my students are going to be able to watch a video explaining how to follow these annotation instructions. Now, there's many different types of instructions you could do. Instead of that, we could instead add in a sticky note and then type in annotation instructions. Um, yellow equals claim. Blue equals evidence. And green equals um, uh, like inference. Um, no. Um, um, I'm blanking on the word right now. Um, like you just got like made it up. Something like that, right? And so now as the students are going through, they're kind of adding those things in. And then you could also say like, well, I want you guys to add in some comments to those. And so um, as you guys are going through, now I can actually see like what's cool about this is um, I know that somebody has annotated on here. So I can click on there because this new icon popped up. So that means that one of my students has annotated the article. I can click on that and I click on their name. And now as I'm scrolling down, I'm going to see what they annotate. So now I can see that Libby has annotated that line right there. I didn't annotate that. So if I go back to a student, you can see of like, right, it's gone now. So if I go back to there, if I click on Libby, I can see now that she's annotated. So I've got another article that I'm going to show you guys here. Uh, also, um, all right, so I'm going to let this finish loading. Um, so what this is, and we're talking about high, high um, interest sources. This was one of those top 10 um, clickbait websites, right? I mean, so it's like super interesting, right? This one's about bizarre animal adaptations. And I brought it into my environmental science class. Now, what I did is I moved this to a Google Doc because it had some inappropriate ads on there and other articles I did not want my students reading because it wasn't appropriate for them. But this article was. So what I did was I moved it and I, I made sure I cited it at the end. Um, but what I did here was my annotation instructions, instead of asking, right, because this was environmental science and it's about adaptations and benefits of animals. And instead of asking a question, right, like, you know, what is the adaptation of the maned wolf and, you know, what is the benefit? I'm going to go ahead and assign this to uh, our class right now, science strategies, so you guys can check it out too as a student. Um, so instead of asking questions like that, it's a lot of work for me, it's a lot of work for the students and it gets to be repetitive. Instead, what I did was I said, hey, Highlight the adaptation and the benefit for each animal, and then highlight one thing you have a question about for each animal and add a note with your question. And that completely changed this. So this is actually the first close reading lesson I did as a, as a science teacher. And so now if I click on my students, I can now see what they've highlighted. And what's cool is this is much more than just asking questions, right? You're keeping students in the reading mode. You're having them go through and they're thinking about the text and they're just simply highlighting. So they got their own highlighting tools and they're highlighting it as they're going along. Um, and they liked it because my students afterwards, you know, I asked them, it's like, what did you guys think of it? Was it better or, or worse than when I just simply would ask you questions? And that they said that they actually liked this better because they didn't have to think about an answer. They didn't have to think about how they were going to type something. They could just simply highlight and kind of react to what they were reading instead of having to formalize questions, right? So here are students like added a question, right? So it was like, why are they called wolves, right? That's a good question, right? It kind of looks like a fox to me. Um, despite the name, main wolves aren't actually wolves. So then why, yeah, so why are they called wolves? That's a good question, right? So we kind of did this for each one. And so what's cool is that, right? So they got it through to it. But now down here, oh, well, it shouldn't be multiple choice. I must have been playing around with this one. Um, I'm going to delete that multiple choice one. That shouldn't be there. Uh, right, so then so I asked them some questions. They finished reading it. They've highlighted things. I can see what they're highlighting. I can see it in real time, too. Now they're answering these questions here. I can click view responses, and now I'm going to be able to see everyone's response right here as they're going along. And this is a completely different experience now for the students and for me. And because, right, I'm going to go back up here, science teachers, right? I've heard, I've said it myself, kind of jokingly, but serious. And I've heard a lot of people say it we're not reading teachers. We have not 
done training. Most of us have not done any kind of formalized training and like reading skills or things like that. But it's super important for us to be able to having students read stuff and learn to be critical readers. Um, but as science teachers, we can totally come up with stuff, right? I mean, this is simple stuff. We are already telling our students to do this anyways. Now we're just saying, hey, highlight it and think about these things as you're reading through it. It's a totally different experience for them. All right, I'm going to jump back, see if anybody had any questions right now. Um, right, reasoning, thank you. Um, all right, so what we're going to do now is now we're going to go to scaffolding primary sources, right? So primary sources, um, for this one I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of these sources called um, uh, PLOS. Um, and so PLOS is, so PLOS.org, um, I'm going to go to the biology one. Um, they're open source, they're peer-reviewed, um, openly licensed um, research articles. And they are in depth, right? So let's go with like the life cycle of the centrosome. Um, and again, these are peer reviewed um, and they've got them all broken down, all these different kind of things, right? I mean, this is this is a legitimate primary source. Um, you can see all the research that they've done. They've got all the sources and stuff like that, right? These are the kind of things we want students to kind of get in the habit of like being introduced to and the difference between a primary and secondary and even tertiary source. Um, it's a lot of stuff. Um, and going back to scaffolding and having students kind of read these things, what's nice about this is what we could do is see if I'm going to load it on this one. Now load in insert learning. Um, now I've got the abstract. So what I can do is I can add in here, um, right? Like, what is purpose? According to what we talked about in class or in your own words kind of thing. Um, right, so we can go through, we can kind of add in some different things here, um, and now we can start scaffolding this with, and we can like summarize the above paragraph. Um, what is the main idea? Um, site to, um, what are two um, I'm going to do is I'm going to go to health and sport. I'm going to go to our quick lesson ideas. And I'm going to click on this 10 text dependent questions that we have. They're basically ungoogleable, meaning students can't really Google them because um, it's not specific to that. Like, you know, it's like they're very general questions, but specific to that paragraph where they're added. Um, right. And so now, um, let's see, let's go with the, let's go with this one. So I'm just going to copy that, jump back over to here and paste that question in above the above paragraph. Um, right. So we got that one. Um, so now we're doing is we're kind of scaffolding this as we go along. We could use the sticky note tool to add in videos and questions in there. We could also record our own video directly within here. Um, then if we wanted to read the text and the students can do the same thing, we can also add in our discussion. So what we're doing is this is some dense text. This is going to be a lot. Um, we can add in or use our own highlighter tool um, and we can highlight things. We can change colors and we can add in our notes. Students are going along. So we can do a lot of really great things as we're going through here. And this is what's really important is that this is breaking the text up. We are scaffolding it for our students. So instead of this big block that's overwhelming and they're not and they're going to be missing things, we're helping guide them through that text. Now, let's say we go all the way through and we get to this results section and we want them to stop there, right? We don't want them to go through this whole article. What I can do is I can simply say, stop. I can put it in a funny gif about stopping. Um, stop, you know. Um, Close your Chromebook when you do it in, begin your lab, something like that. Um, right, so you can put a little notes so that now you don't need to like move this content to someplace else. Want to do materials and methods section and then pick up from there. Um, so it's a really nice way you can kind of break up these primary sources, but you're having students actually get in there to them. All right, so we got our close reading um, and then our scaffolding primary sources. 
Um, student research, I'm going to come back to, but we're going to go to blending your science labs. I'm going to real quickly see if anybody had a question yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, so science labs, right? So what I'm going to do is um, cloud in a bottle experiment. Now, this is a very simple one, the one I actually did with my students. Um, and what I mean by I'm going to go to I'll try out this one. Um, my original one was on a Google Doc, but I've um, lost my Google Doc. So we're going to go with this one, right? Now, normally what we would do is we'd probably like print this out and like give it to students or something like that, or we do it as a big presentation. But we are going to use insert learning on it. And so we're, what's going to be great here is blended means what we're doing is we're using technology to augment in-class instruction. So it's letting students work more at their own pace, and it's freeing the teacher to be able to walk around the room. So instead of me doing a big lab for the entire class, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to stick a note up the top. And I noticed that up here, um, I think it was actually, what I'm going to do is you can either record your own video or, well, that's a long one. All right, we're going to do, Cloud in a bottle experiment. So instead of doing like a lab experiment up in the front of the class, um, I'm going to go with a short one, um, right? So I'd want to like double check these things first, but I'm going to go with this one and I'm going to copy the link to that YouTube video. really significant things that are going to be going on here by pasting in this video, by pasting our tutorial, right? Think of all the times that you have done a demonstration or experiment and students go through it and they want you to redo something or they had a question or they missed something and they've got to do not have to do these things. Now students can go through, they can watch this video at their own pace, they can rewind it, they can do all those things as they're going along. All right, now for these things, right, we've got I'm going to simply like get things right. Um, right. So say if we need some matches, we're going to go to Google and we're going to get a picture of some matches. Um, we could also use the built-in um, video recording tool and do the same thing there. Right. So I'm just going to go with this. Well, oh, it's a huge image. Um, we'll go with that one. And here, so I'm going to just kind of copy that image head back over here and paste that in, right? So now what you can do is we're using the same article, the same original source, and now I'm kind of augmenting it. I'm using I'm, by adding in a lot of these different images of what I want them to do. And now they're gonna go through, we've got the plot process here. So like fill the clear plastic two liter bottle, one third full with warm water, right? So I can add a little note here, right? Like less than half full or empty. A little joke there. Optimism, right? Um, right. So then we do is explanation, right? So now let's kind of explain these things. Um, so, but what I really liked also is that as we're going along, we can have students now record a video showing they can add in their own seeking note and click on the record button and then actually record a video of them explaining what they've created. Um, you could do the same thing with Flipgrid. You could add a Flipgrid video and put that in there. Because some really clever ways of getting a cloud to work better. Um, so like expert tips, share what worked best. So now students have to do that lab. Um, it's a really creative way. From in your own words, playing. Now they're able to what they need. You've added in some additional information that have helped out their class. Answering some of the questions that can go in their lab report all within this same article. So this is going to be a really neat way to. 
do this if you like me and you've got a lot of um, Google Docs with your science labs, you can go back and do that. I was talking to one chemistry teacher of where she had like some really, you know, right, like, you know, trying to set up a titration experiment. That's going to be a lot of work. But, right, of course, you know, someone on Google now videos and then put them in there. Um, one chemistry teacher, she basically then created her own videos of each individual part, like how to set up the stand, how to do different steps, and then put them each video. Time that you being up at the front trying to explain stuff, you are walking around the room. Very, very last one of student research. Here's what is so great about for the student research. Um, I'm going to switch to being a student. So you can switch to being a student. Um, I don't recommend it now that you can join classes, but I'm going to be a student. I'm going to do that. I'm going to head back over here. Now what's going to happen is, let's say I go to um, Tween Tribune, and I'm going to go ahead and pick an article. So what you can do is you could then have students go out there, and they can use Insert Learning on any web page that they want. Um, and so you can give them a topic. Maybe you want them to pick a specific topic of their own. You can do weekly current events, like science events, something like that. Um, and what students can do is they can go through, and they can annotate any article that's out there and then share that back with you. So I'm going to load in Insert Learning. And right, and so the student toolbar is a little bit more limited, doesn't have as many tools as the teacher. They've got their highlighter tool and their sticky note tool. And so as they're going through, and so what you can do is you can have students then like add their own questions. So you can say like question, why does this, something like that. And they can highlight things, And right? So it's whether you want them to just simply like add in their own notes and kind of like, you know, kind of collect some research or if you want them to kind of create a lesson that they could share back with the rest of the class, um, there's a lot of different ways you could do this. But when they're done with that, what they can now do is they can click on this share with teachers. And when they do that, it's going to give them a unique URL. And it's just kind of like with that teacher share link. What they can do is now they can copy this and they can paste that into say an email or into a Google Classroom assignment um, and now send that article to you. And so now you as the teacher, you can click on that and then see what it is that the student has annotated um, and you can copy it and then share it out to the entire class. Um, there's some really creative things that teachers have done by having their students go out there and we're at the webinar right now. Um, if anybody has any questions, let me know at this point. Um, I'm checking here. We got some like different things on Twitter too. Um, I we will have one. So the the article that's coming up or the newsletter that's going to be coming out tomorrow. Um, is going to the class we have a challenge going on this week um, or our lesson challenge for April and May is going to be related around Earth Day so it's going to be our Earth Challenge um, it is sponsored by Kid Wind or Recharge Labs um, I think is is their name now um, and they make some really great environmental um, environment related um, science kits, especially like the wind turbines are the really amazing ones that they have. I've used them with my students and they're awesome. Um, but they have graciously offered to sponsor um, this month's challenge. Um, so it's our Earth Lesson Challenge. I'll be sending out a newsletter about it tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. And it's also going to be in the um, in are in the public library. You can find all the lessons in there too that you are going to be sharing. So um, emails with any questions that you have. Thank you very much everybody for joining tonight. Uh, if you have other suggestions for science articles or different tools to embed, send them our way and we'll post them on the website and we'll share them out in future newsletters. So thank you every all the science teachers. Have a great evening.